Hi, this is Tim from DTools. Thanks for joining us for this video. This video is going to cover creating a new project in SI2015. This video assumes you've already gone through the quick setup, downloaded some products, set your pricing, and you're ready to start a project. Let's go ahead and click on New Project. This brings up a wizard. This wizard is going to walk you through all the attributes you need for a job. The three pieces of information that you absolutely need are a client, a project name, and a price type. If you've already imported your clients and contacts, you can use one here, or if you haven't, that's okay. You can create a new one, or you can import one from Outlook or from QuickBooks. So we'll use this client, and we'll give it a project name. We'll say Office Building. And then we're going to use the retail price type. Details allows you to track up to 12 levels or types of pricing and then you can apply these price types on a per project basis. So we'll use retail pricing. We can also manage the progress. We can say this is in uh, the estimating phase. And then any information that comes with the contact already entered will automatically populate. Uh, we could set a start date and an end date if we wish. And then as we walk through this wizard, it's going to ask us for some basic information. Um, the site address, the billing address. A new feature in SI2015 allows you to apply a price rule when adding products to this project. So if I wanted to, let's say, create a specific price margin for this job, I could go ahead and apply a price rule as I'm adding products. But we'll just use our current pricing. I can manage my tax rates and determine the tax settings for this particular job. I can assign project resources now or later. If I do that now, then that just means I'm associating these resources for this project. I can also assign any other client and contact that may be in my database. In case I need to create a contact report, I can go ahead and associate these people and then generate those reports. I can enter a scope of work. Scope of work, of course, is uh, going to help us outline what we need to do for the customer. I can either type something in, or we have a feature where you can insert what we call snippets. And snippets are pieces of information that you can use to speed things along. So we could go ahead and copy and paste different copy. We could save it as different systems. And as we insert these snippets, I'm building my scope of work. I can use this over and over again so that whenever we're doing our projects, we know that everyone in the company is using the same type of information so everything looks like it's coming from the same company. To create a new snippet it's very easy. If you copied and pasted text in here you could select it all, create new, give it a name, and then this will become a new snippet and will be available for future projects. Now we're going to define the locations for this project. Locations are important because they allow us to be very specific about tracking where the equipment's going to go. And then when we go to do our reports, we can organize things. So product projects are made up of locations and sublocations. So if it's a single room, it may just be a location. But since this is an office building, let's go ahead and say office building one, that's a main location. A sublocation may be the first floor. A sublocation from that may be an office. So I could say Office 101. We can go up to five levels deep. I could go from the office to the closet to the rack. But in this case, let's just do a couple of offices. And we'll say these are our locations for this job. Uh, why, why we want to do this is because now I can say, when I'm generating any type of report, show me everything assigned to Office 102. Show me everything assigned to Office 101. If we wish, we could use an, an, a snippet here and say we're going to do a, a, an AV system. And then this will show up on a proposal. And I can say uh, on a per location basis, we've got a scope of work. So there's many ways to work within our system. Systems apply the same way. We can associate systems for this job. And that's just really another way of organizing information. So I can say we're going to do a control system, a CCTV system, housewide audio video, and let's say voice video and data. And then I can associate equipment with these systems. We can create a payment schedule. We could do fixed amounts. We could do a billing percentage. We could add dates. Um, and then these will show up in a contract report. Once I save it,
It's going to open this project within the system and now I can start adding products to the job. What you're going to notice here is that I've got my locations and I have my systems. So here is where I'm going to build the bill of materials. So to start working it's very easy. I could work by location or I could work by system or I could just start adding products. I could also work in multiple locations. So let's say I'm going to put speakers in each of these offices. So I'll come over here to my catalog and I'm going to say I'm going to search for a particular manufacturer. Let's say JBL. So I've got a couple of these JBL speakers I like to use. I'm going to go ahead and say I want two of these in each room and I can just drag them over up oh, and it's prompting me for an accessory. I've accessorized the speaker with some speaker cable. So I'll say yes I want this accessory. Now because this is bulk wire uh, I can specify the length of each run. I've got my terminals and if I wish I can assign the head end. So I'll say these are 100 foot, I can say these are 150 foot runs. So when I assign these now, I've just added two speakers and two 150 foot runs per office. So I can keep adding products to this job and that's what's going to build my project. So let's say I need, um, I need a flat screen TV in each of these offices. I'll go ahead and I'll say I need Samsung LED. It's going to bring up, this is now again everything in my personal DTools catalog. So if I know what I wish to use, I can go ahead and say I want one of these. I'll drag this over. Again, it's prompting me for the accessories so I don't forget anything. So I'll say yes, I want this mount. And you're going to see that I've, even though I wasn't asked, I added a, an HDMI cable so I didn't forget it. Up here we see a running total. So at any given time, if I want to see a summary, I can go ahead and view by phase, location, system, or item. So I'm just going to keep adding products to this project until I'm ready to generate a proposal. So in this case I've got my price, I've got my margins, I'm tracking the hours because as we've added products to the job I'm automatically keeping track of the time and I've got my labor. So let's go ahead and quickly generate a proposal. So DTool has a powerful reporting engine. We're going to allow you to create client reports, installation reports, and management reports. We'll start with client reports. So we have a number of templates that ship with the product. Uh, we also have a number of templates that you can download from our knowledge base as well as a custom report designer so that you can create your own custom reports. So let's just use a proposal with large images and then I can sort by location or system or location and system. Let's just go by location. And then we have a number of themes that we can use. So these themes just give your reports a little bit of you know pizzazz. I can um, choose different themes. Uh, let's go ahead and use this one. Um, you can also create your own theme. We tell you exactly what size image to use for the header, what size to use for the subheader. You could give it a name. So we'll go ahead and use this. And then if I wish, I can really determine how much information I want to show. So do I want to show the model number? Do I want to show the line item pricing? Do I, how, how much detail do we want to show? In this case, let's show the model number, but let's keep the, let's keep the line item pricing hidden and we'll just show by, by location. We'll hit save. And we can also choose a cover page image. So we'll hit run and now what this is going to do is this is going to take everything in the bill of materials and it's going to generate a proposal for me. So there's the customer information that we put together at the beginning. Uh, there's a cover page image that I chose. This is the company information that we put in when we first set up the system. And as we walk through this, we're seeing by location. So I've got my office building. There's that scope of work I included. I've got a couple of speakers, my speaker cable, my TV, my mount. So we can go ahead and we're looking at a room total here. So I can just scroll through and each room is going to have this. And we get to the end and I've got my equipment, my labor, my tax, and I have a place for the customer to sign.
Now, if we wanted to do some further editing, we can always export this. We can export to PDF. We could export to rich text. We could export to Excel. Um, if we have Outlook, we could go ahead and click on our Outlook, and it's going to generate a PDF, and I could send it directly to the customer. I open this. And it's going to open a PDF, and I can walk through this way. So that was a very quick and easy way to generate a quick proposal. Obviously, there's much more to the reports that we have. We can cover that in another video. Thanks for joining us.